Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. I've got a new uh, brush set called Rake Brushes, which I've made and it's free on my Patreon page, so I thought I'd do a little demo to show how they work. I've actually just done a demo and recorded it, and for some reason the screen was black and it's only got my audio, not the visual, which isn't very helpful for a painting video. So all I can tell you about that one is it was an absolute masterpiece. The greatest thing that's ever been seen or known by man and it's lost to the mists of eternity and the sands of oblivion and all that sort of thing so i can only hope to replicate my former glory and paint something new for you so let's have a go so here's my uh, my new set it's got 10 brushes in there all rake brushes. So a rake brush being a brush that makes five or several lines I should say. So if I take the transfer off you can see an opaque version. So each each one of them has um, different brush heads blended together to give different effects and at different scales they'll give a different effect also. So when I'm uh, making a painting I often turn the brush transfer off so that I can paint quite opaquely and try and make a value statement. When I'm painting I often go into my quiet place uh, I'm just focusing, so I'll try and keep the narrative going as much as I can. At this stage of a painting, I'm really just trying to lay down colours, values. don't want to be precious about anything at this stage, so I zoom right out. If you hear my uh, my pen up and down, I use my brush a little bit like a stamp sometimes. As much as possible, I try to paint on one layer. Um, obviously, if you're working on something like a book or complex illustration piece it can be helpful to have several layers and um, gives you a little more leeway for changing things and editing but uh, working on one layer it means I'm not distracted by thinking oh what's on that layer or what's on that layer and I'm really just thinking mm -hmm. about the values the colors and how it's reading And with these little colour studies as well, I'm always trying to learn something because uh, it might teach me something about values or the way that colours work together or composition. Um, I'm not trying to make a perfect copy of the photo, though sometimes I do that just to learn. Um, but I'm trying to be inspired by it, to learn something from it at the same time and use it in a way that I can take my own work forwards. I think perhaps these rake brushes would often be used over the top of other brushes to give um, a little something extra, but um, I thought it would be interesting to try and use them to make, make a whole painting. So I don't colour pick from the photo, I'm always just trying to eyeball the colours and I'm not trying to get them precisely, but to uh, in some ways exaggerate what I see, in some ways be inspired by what I see, and come up with something that's inspired by the reference, but not a slave to it. You'll notice that my uh, my painting is landscape, while the reference is portrait. Um, I often do that on purpose, just to force me, again, you know, not into kind of slavishly copying something, but to just use it as a starting point. 
as an inspiration. These beginning stages, I, um, I keep the brush transfer off so it's painting opaquely. Try not to change the brushes too much at this stage, just so I can get stuff laid down. I often zoom right out um, because it really ch shows me is it reading from a distance and um, if it's not reading from a distance there's no point being too precious up close. And again it's another way that it stops me being too precious. Um, another way I do that is in manual mode where I lean back and squint. Um, different ways to get a fresh perspective on the picture. And another way is to press, um, well, I've got an action created where um, I press F2 and it switches the, uh, it flips the canvas horizontally for me. Um, but I think that's in image, um, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal. You can do it that way too. Of course, with anything like this, always just bear in mind where's the light source coming from. In this case, it's obviously behind the trees. And therefore, where are the shadows going? Away from the trees. And, you know, just simple things like that sometimes. Always just keep it in mind. Sometimes there's multiple light sources and you get little rim lights and all sorts of exciting stuff happening. Uh, so it's really fun to observe those things too. I always like to think of these little colour studies as like almost little postcards or something like that. So if I left it at any stage, it would just be a little, uh, little postcard of the colour, a little memory of uh, the study I've done. I'm forever stopping in the woods and just looking at the light on trees, taking photos. It's looking at it for ages, thinking about light. Makes me a bit of a pain to walk with, uh, but it is fun. Okay, so I think I've got a fairly simple value statement there. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my layer and then just work on the new one. Sometimes it's good just to keep an iterative step so that you can always go backwards. So what I'll do now is I'll choose a new brush. The brushes when you select them they default with the transfer turned on um, and if you want to paint more directly just turn it off. Um, but let's turn it on for a little bit and see see how we go. This one's called Tire Tracks. So named because I thought they looked like tire tracks. Uh, let me do if I do a as you can see. And you'll notice of course when I zoom in it all looks abstract. And that's the nature of painting. I mean it's all abstract in the end, but you can constantly zoom in and refine and refine and refine. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, it's really fun to do that and you can spend hours and hours just painting and painting. And sometimes it's fun just to come up with a quick, quick study and explore ideas. Photoshop has lots of options, like in the layers, you can do all sorts of la um, layer modes and things like that. But when I'm uh, doing these studies, I love to just not do any of that and try as much as possible to just capture anything I do with the, uh, with the paint. So I'm training myself, really, and limiting myself. And of course, there's uh, things you can and can't do. But it forces you to try. If ever I feel I'm getting a little too precious, I zoom straight back out, so apologies if it looks like I'm painting on a pixel. Um, but it's so easy to just zoom in and start, you know, you could noodle away for hours and just, just paint and paint the details on a tree and you know that there's a place for that as well, that's uh, really meditative and calming and and look beautiful but at the moment I'm just trying to make a impression and you can build up a repertoire of these impressions and color studies and you know, sometimes you can use them to inform other work and they might inspire you to do a new painting or something like that Again, doing the horizontal flip just to give me a fresh perspective on it, help me make some decisions. The really fun thing about both um, painting and using different brushes and tools is that you can have a whole group of artists using the same reference and the same brushes and they'll do something completely different. Um, so if you do use these brushes, I'd love to see what you do and how you use them because there's always myriad ways to use things and um, I often learn that way seeing how someone else has done something that I'd never have even considered. And everyone's got, um, I think in the same way that people speak, you have a distinctive artistic voice where just a natural kind of personal stamp that comes through in the way that you draw and paint and you know, we're all a melting pot of our influences and It's really fun to see how someone else will approach exactly the same subject as you. 
It's always nice to have artist friends. Sometimes I'm just trying the brushes out to see what I can uh, come up with. I don't always have a plan in mind, but it's just exploring and trying out different combinations. Just going to add a new layer so I can try some of those light effects without completely going over painting underneath. Sometimes what I'll do if I'm not sure about something, I'll do it on a new layer and then merge it down once I'm happy with it. Which is one of the benefits of digital painting, um, but never let it stop you painting traditionally, which is great fun as well. these wonderful kind of greeny blues over the silhouettes of the trunks just where the light is hitting them. Okay, so I might just add a few finishing touches and then leave it there. You can see obviously it's still very abstract and loose. For me, part of the fun of it is just seeing how much you can convey with as little as possible. You often get these um, saturated hues at the edge of shadows, so sometimes just where the, uh, the light is hitting the edge of a shadow, um, you can see with the trees as well. You know, it's really fun to try and capture those. Sometimes I exaggerate them a bit as well because, well, why not? And uh, Sometimes just little dabs or stabs or stamps with the brush. Just add little hints of texture and brush marks.
and then just a few little dots at full opacity. Let's just try it with. Another brush. Try that one. Okay. Actually, I'm nothing if not indecisive. Got this wonderful little. Uh, where the, uh, the light is most saturated, hitting the tree. There's so many um, wonderful nuances of colour that you can try and capture. I always feel like there's so much more to learn and do with colour. I think I'll leave it there for now. That's a fun little study. Um, I hope you like the brush set. Um, it's free on my Patreon page, so just uh, go to my Patreon page. There's a part at the top called Collections, and if you go there and go to Free Content, the rake brushes are there. If you like them, you can subscribe to my page and get more content, but there's absolutely no obligation to do so. I hope you enjoy the brushes anyway. Um, well, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.